Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode. Today we're gonna to be unboxing what is hopefully a 60s Gibson guitar in here. Uh, this may be a new project for the channel. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing and check it out. So I purchased this guitar on Reverb and uh, it was listed as, as a little bit of a project. So we'll see. They really sealed this one up here. All right, finally got this thing unwrapped and uh, here it is. This is a 1960s SG Special that is highly modified. However, it does look like it has the original pickups and this is the original pick guard that's like cut out. Witch hat knobs, tremolo, uh, where is it? Here's the bridge, original bridge. And uh, it looks pretty cool. There's just one small issue here, and that is the headstock, which is no longer attached to the guitar, unfortunately. I knew about this. I purchased the guitar with this in mind. Uh, unfortunately, this one really had a nice fall, and uh, we've got some wood missing here, but, um, hmm. So my original idea for this guitar was to, uh, you know, clamp the headstock back in place, glue it back together, and see if we can get this guitar working. Uh, but I don't know realistically if there's enough wood here to make that possible. So uh, I'm gonna call my friend Joel and see what he says. Uh, he will definitely know what I can and can't do with this thing. But uh, as you can tell, you know, it's clearly been modified and uh, the value of this guitar is really in the parts, you know, a couple original P90s, the knobs, the entire uh, 1967 wiring assembly, which is left intact. And, uh, you know, there is some value to, to the husk itself, the bridge, the tailpiece here. So yeah, it's kind of a bummer how much wood is missing on this thing, but you know, I bought it for the price of the parts basically. So either way, it'll be fine, but I really wanted to uh, get this thing playing and uh, see how it sounded today. So uh, let me figure out if that's possible. And if it is, then we'll uh, get to gluing. All right, so here we are a few days later. I've got the SG on the workbench here, and we're gonna open it up, take a look at the electronics, hopefully narrow down the date of this guitar. But also I was able to speak with my friend Joel, who I consider to be a master luthier. He did all the repair work on my 58 Les Paul, which um, I've got a crazy video on that. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it down below. But really, you know, there's a few ways to fix a broken headstock like this. And the best case scenario is to use a traditional kind of wood glue, clamp it back together. And, you know, I've had a, a lot of guitars that have been repaired like that and they've been fine. Um, but when you have as much wood missing as you do on this one, there's really only a couple options left and you could graft in a whole new mahogany headstock, which would be a really pricey repair job or there is a nuclear option, which is to use a structural kind of epoxy, and that will fill in some of the gaps of the wood that's missing. That's never the way to repair a vintage guitar of any kind, but unfortunately, this is a later 60s SG because it has the narrow nut, and it's refinished, the heel is contoured, the top of the headstock is chopped off. It's just not feasible to, to do a $1,000, $1,500 repair job on a guitar that's not even worth that. So my thought is if, if I can use an epoxy and get this thing playable again, then it would be worth it to me. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the electronics, uh, the pickups and the pots, see if we can date those. Hopefully they are indeed original. And then I'm going to take this thing out in the garage and uh, epoxy this thing back together. We'll see if we can fix it. All right, so this pit guard is just hanging on by some tape, as you can see. And they've customized it very nicely, right? Uh, the P90s are missing the pickup covers. It's not a huge deal. It's basically a rat's nest in here. Different wires that are not even, some of them connected. I might go ahead and put a multimeter on here. 
see if they are reading. Reading a 9.3. So that's a nice hot neck pickup. And the bridge pickup, 9.5. So, you know, based on that, I'm hopeful that the pickups are working. That's a good sign. Let's uh, check out these pots. So the good thing is this entire assembly right here looks original and it looks like it hasn't really been messed with at all. So and it's actually got the original braided wire leads from the pickup. So I can probably work with this and, you know, make it look stock. It's got the original, you know, red dime capacitors and the pots all date to Looks to me like uh, 13767. So all these pots date to 1967. I think we can safely call this a 67 SG. Now what I need to do is go ahead and remove these Grover tuners because uh, for one, I don't want them getting in the way but also these are really heavy actually so this may be part of the reason as to why this headstock snapped off and you know i never really thought about this but a lot of old gibsons were were grover back in the day and i didn't realize how heavy these tuners are they i mean these ones specifically feel pretty heavy to me so uh, that may be something you want to think about if you have those on your old gibson but um I'm going to try to clean up some of the glue that they used from previous repair jobs. I've got the truss rod nut removed here and just try to clean this up the best that I can and prepare it for uh, the epoxy and we'll see how this goes. So here's where I've ended up with this thing. Uh, obviously I've got it clamped up and that was definitely a struggle uh, just trying to get the headstock in the right position and get the clamps on there. Obviously with the, the lack of wood, it, it, was, it was a little difficult but I did the best I could. So I'm going to uh, take this guitar inside and clean up the repair the best that I can and then uh, reassemble the guitar and then we'll test it out and see if this holds up. So I actually wanted to do away with these Grover tuners, I'm not a huge fan, and they're actually pretty heavy, which is not good for this headstock, obviously. But whoever routed these out, uh, I don't know. They must have used a spoon to do it. So uh, these are gonna have to work for now, and maybe down the line, you could get some conversion bushings or something to, to go back to a stock Cluson tuner. All right, here it is. I uh, got the guitar back together and uh, it still probably needs a little bit of fret work and this bridge is, is really worn down. This is the original bridge to the guitar, but all the electronics seem to be working, which that's uh, obviously a good sign. Um, I have to give a shout out to Joel for helping walk me through this process. I definitely learned a lot and you know, it's, it's certainly not a perfect repair if you look at it from a few feet away. 
it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's it's an obvious repair, but uh, I knew that was going to be the case when when there was so much material missing from the headstock. Uh, but overall, um, I'm pleasantly surprised, really. I think it turned out pretty good considering the, the condition of this guitar when I got it. And, you know, uh, I learned a lot and uh, this guitar doesn't have to go to... Uh, to the wood pile uh, after all. So, um, you know, most people probably would have just parted it out. So I'm glad to bring it back to life and we're gonna go ahead and play this thing through uh, one of my super reverbs, see how it sounds, go through the different pickup positions, make sure everything is functioning and uh, we'll see how she sounds. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, if you wanna help support me continuing to put out videos like this, if you want to comment on the video, that's really the uh, best thing you can do if you want to subscribe as well. So uh, here it is. This is the 1967 SG Special. I'll uh, give it a go here, and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Peace. <laughs>